Hello? Aha! It's Talking Anthara! With special hey. guests, Sean and Jess over there where I'm pointing. Wait, wait, yeah, 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 yeah. Ta-da! <laughs> hey! <laughs> Uh, they are in California, which is where I live, and currently, obviously, in my apartment. So, yep, that's the thing that's happening. We invaded. So they're over there, but also down there? Yes. Yep, over there. Okay. Uh, and also, we have everybody else. And we have Cammy, our lore keeper and host of Talking Anthara, who is now going to take over... With a bunch of quests. Oh, I'll summarize briefly what's happened since the last talking in Thora, I think. Ballpark. And then she'll take over. It has a bunch of questions for all the players, and maybe some for me. We'll see. Yeah, I uh, do. So, last talking in Thora happened after, I don't know what session number, but it was the session where you all fought the wolves with sure. Arya Nu. Mm. The only reason I know that is because that session almost exploded except for the brilliant work of Brian slash Yosnip, who saved it, mostly. And so we were, we did it that time to make up, to like explain what happened in that session because we thought we were going to lose it. Turns out, Brian saved most of it, so now it's on YouTube. But then we had a talking and thought it was really fun, so now it's become a thing, and now this is episode two. Huzzah! So on? since then, the party, joining with Arianu, Arianu, made their way quite quickly after that to the... Layer of a blight tag who, as it turns out, it seems, was at the source of a lot of the goings on in Northwest Cato, specifically the creation and sending out of the blightlings. But there was a lot more to be discovered in her lair after they killed her, which they did in a great battle, uh, very successful. And they found some strange altars, they found a bunch of dossiers on children with some odd symbols on them that they potentially had seen before that led them to believe that there was more going on potentially above all this regarding the the stealing of the children and they also potentially killed a gigantic village full of people we don't know and by we i mean mainly fey um oh, yikers oh uh, no. Shortly after that, and after defeating the hag, they returned to Raygrove, uh, passed along some information, learned a bit of stuff about the Blightlings, buried some uh, remains that apparently the hag had been gathering, and then began to return back to civilization, uh, met up with an old friend at her house where they kept her, uh, their boats and her chinchilla. Um... <laughs> And then sailed their way back up the river, technically. Broke their way into a vault of some kind? Hidden behind a door? Wall? Did we break Can in? You if you have, does it count as breaking when you have a key? Say, right? When you have a key? Well, I mean, listen, it's, 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 it's not, it's not your vault. vault. Oh, I'm on both bikes. It's ours now. Yeah. Uh, opened a vault, which they had clear <laughs> access to. My apologies. Yeah, yeah. Really defined Recovered out. a magic item in there and then were swiftly forced out by apparently the mechanics of this place and don't know whether they'll be able to get back in or not. We're going to try. A day. Yeah. They had a, a key of some kind, it seemed, a rod that helped activate the door, which seems to be now inert. So hey, Sean, hey, Matt, soon I'll have stone shape, so it might not even matter. Oh! <laughs> They got back down to Sawfeld. Had some brief debriefing in Sawfeld, but not too much uh, excitement. Reconvened with the horses, which was uh, an experience. And with Lucy, who was brought back. And then began to make their way south again to Proward. On the way, meeting up with Clert the Goblin, who led them to a group of bandits that they had been asked to potentially deal with in some regard by Mayor Maddock in Proward found their fort slash camp and utterly dispatched of them which is where the campaign currently stands uh with the one looming message received by eclipse though not everyone in the party even knows about it yet uh regarding some urgent concerns of her father's back in olea so that's where we are cammy yeah, take yeah. over 
Thank you, wonderful DM. Uh, who wants to go first? I have so many questions, you guys. So many anonymous fans, apparently. Uh, I don't know. Who wants to go first? Do you want to roll? Okay, yeah, roll let's roll these. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, let's roll. Highest goes. Highest goes. Okay. Okay, let's see. Uh, I got a 13. Are you getting your own dice? Do I have okay. my Nas dice? Oh, oh that's true. I should probably use Brightwing's dice. I'll use my nearest dice. You can have one for Eclipse slash Jess, right? Yeah, I've got, I've got, I've got one. I missed, but it was a natural one. <laughs> Wait, oh, no. <laughs> Get your inspiration back. Not Ryan. Hey! Right, I'm just going to roll two. <laughs> <laughs> I got an 11. I got nine. I got 16. 13. Leah goes first. Oh, right. tracks. Okay. Pressure. Um, well, I have two questions for you, Leah. Okay. First one. How does Brightwind's hair stay blue? <laughs> stay blue? Yeah. It's it's been it turned blue during her weekend. And it's uh -huh, stayed blue. Uh -huh. Incredible. That's it. <laughs> so now she dies and she goes out she, to the salon and she like has a she has a regular person like... she goes to. I imagined her like crushing up blueberries. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god! Yes. Oh, They're so definitely great. way too pastelly and bright to be blueberry. I don't know True. what they would be. Some but kind but of if flower? you put blueberries on like a light hair, it would stain, not mm. die. Well, she has dark brown. Mm, okay. She has dark okay. brown hair. Oh, that's true. We saw that in yeah, yeah. a recent drawing. Yeah, she had More dark drawing. brown hair when she was when she was little. Nice. Baby Brightwing. <laughs> the next one is what does Brightwing think about the wilds being divided into other gods outside her culture? Oh, oh man. Um, well, I'm intrigued wholeheartedly, and I can't wait to find out where this is leading. But Brightwing is mainly confused um, and curious and wants to understand. Because um, she grew up, she knew that there were people that believed in other things besides what they believed in. Um, but never got the specifics of what it was. And so hmm. we've met three different faiths so far, right? Syriana, so. Arya yeah. Deuce God, and then there, I think there was like, someone mentioned the water god or the ocean god, I think. Mother right. Mia, was it? I think Mother Ari Mia is Syriana. Mentioned, yeah, yeah, Ari yeah. Nu mentioned the god of the sea. Yeah, yeah there's a god yeah. of the sea. Um, Apparently. <laughs> apparently. But, like, exactly, Br Brightway is, like, nature is all encompassing. It's all intertwined. It all affects each other. You can't have sky without ground. You can't have land without ocean. Um, you can't have water without fire. It all affects each other. It all intertwines. And so to separate it out doesn't make any sense to her. Mm -hmm. um, so she wants to understand why. And this is a weird kind of, like, art reflects life sort of thing. Like, in D&D... It's always been a pantheon of gods. It's never been like one encompassing creator of some sort. So mm -hmm. it's, and, and in our day and day life, we have mono religions and we have poly, poly religions. Mm -hmm. So it's cool to kind of like, that might be what's going on. It might not be what's going on. Maybe all the gods back her. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we still Who knows? Who knows? Excellent. We shall Let's see. Let's see. I'm excited to find out. Okay, for everyone, because I thought this was an amazing question. If your character wasn't an adventurer, what would their profession be? It's a hard one. I've been Not, thinking about it, and I don't think I can throw <laughs> like, it Yeah, that's kind of his whole deal. Yeah, that's like, that's sort of what my character... Well, I mean, if we're talking Seraph, for example, Right? Mm. He'd be a mechanical engineer for sure. Mm -hmm. Right? Fuck yeah. Um, I think Edwin would just, like, explode. <laughs> like, I don't think he would be able to handle not doing that line of work and just, like, spontaneously combust. Could he be a Eventually. Butcher? He could be a cobbler, a shoe cobbler. 
Oh, shoot. You know what? Yeah. Edwin? <laughs> shoe, co- shoe cobbler. They That's shoes? The That's not the most random ass job. Fuck it, right? I think Faye would be in sales. Mm. Oh, jeez. Or, like, or like marketing <laughs> of some kind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But advertising. Like, yeah, in advertising. In, definitely advertising. How, how scummy would Faye be as a salesperson, though? Let's be real. Like, she, she'd do really well, right? But, like, she'd be tricking, like, everybody into buying shit they don't we need, count like, all her the time. persuasion roles? That's capitalism, Very. my guy. Yeah. <laughs> Facts. So Faye's a capitalist, confirmed. So, well, well, Faye, would she be salesing for Rymax? Probably. It's probably, so, like, the family business. Yeah, yeah she's pretty, pretty capitalist. capitalist. Great, okay. Right. I think that Yasnip would probably be some kind of delivery boy for Rymax. <laughs> that that would be pretty fitting. To one of like the franchise branch locations. Yeah, just yeah. to and fro <laughs> from one city to another, just back and forth. Um, I think Brightwing depends on the environment. If she was back home, she would just be a normal person in the Mai Hai and just did the healing and the teaching and stuff like that. But if she was in the real world and made her life there, I think she might be a midwife. Hmm. Ooh. Um, yeah, I was thinking nurse. I was thinking like yeah. beekeeper too, potentially. You know. Oh, oh, God. <laughs> Hello, she could be bees. both. She could be. She could be a midwife draw that. and a Someone beekeeper. Someone get a drawing that. Hello bees. Oh, hello bees. What would oh, a clip be? It's funny because Eclipse technically already has a job. <laughs> True. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's just not doing it right now. <laughs> um, She's too busy slumming around with us. I <laughs> know. God damn it. Um, no, her her job is to be safeguarding the uh, the knowledge. So that's that's her job. Security. Nice. Security. What would Freya be? Frida. Frida. Yeah. She's not what, an adventure. What would Frida be doing? Yeah. Well, Frida, I guess Frida does kind of adventure. adventure a She'd be in a home, right? <laughs> oh my god. Uh, a home for chinchillas. Yeah. Mm. True. True. She, she'd have a chinchilla sanctuary. That, or she'd be one of those really weird-looking pet shops on a corner that nobody goes yeah, to. Yeah, she would probably run <laughs> some kind of odd shop. Probably, yeah, Ooh. in a town somewhere. Side sales of mushrooms, you know? <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Heck yeah. Hmm. Well, Jess, since Eclipse is the only one with a job, apparently, in the party, let's talk about her. I have a question that goes like this. The growing concern about Eclipse's father and the consortium culminated with the letter two episodes ago. How worried are you about the situation? It's like a constant state. <laughs> I don't, yes. I don't yes. know which word to yeah, yeah. express it. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, I mean, so like realistically, she's not away from home for this extended period of time. It's usually she goes out somewhere and like does one thing and then comes back. So that's what they expected her to do was go out, find something and come back. Yeah. She wasn't supposed to be gone for what I think has been like a month. Or something. It's been oh, we've been out. Great the question. calendar. Pulling up oh, the calendar. Pull up the calendar. Okay. <laughs> Quick look. What are the name of the months? What are the name of the months? Uh, uh, don't worry. I'm getting it. I'm getting it. Get we could just ask that. We talked about this. We could literally just ask that if it was that Jarch. <laughs> Jarch. <laughs> okay. Let's see. The, the you guys started start on March 22nd, and it is currently. April 26th, so it's been no. over a month since you got to Proward, yeah. <laughs> and it had probably been, I want to say, like a week or maybe a little more than a week mm-hmm. before that that you left the lake. We have so. to do a thing and, like, celebrate or something if we end up playing on the day that it actually is. Oh, oh yeah. Because yeah. yeah. oh. if we're pushing April... Uh, it could happen. Could it? If they started in March? Started in March 20 what? We we would have started two days ago in our in our setup. Saturday. Yeah. No, it hasn't happened. 
because we got ahead. But we could potentially catch up in the not too distant future. It's possible. Depends on how quickly you guys drop. Oh, that'd be cool. Um, but yeah, I think it's. I think she's just been overall worried now that it's been confirmed that something's actually wrong. It's like justifiably worried, if that makes sense. Like yeah. she's felt like, oh, I'm just yeah. being ridiculous, and now it's just like, oh shit, okay, like, this is bad. I think there's validation to bad. the fear. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. On a similar note, did Eclipse ever make an attempt at magic considering her family's apparent skill with it? Ooh. She's not adept at magic in any way. That was not part of her life. They learn about it, but they don't practice it. Um, mm. I think her sister is relatively the same way. She has a friend that is magical, and that's pretty much the extent of how she's known about it physically. Great. Let's go. Well, let's talk about magic people. Basically, everyone else. Let's jump to Edwin. Because I like where he's at right now. I had a question a long time ago. That there was a conversation with Faye. Where Edwin said that he's not interested in knowing where he comes from or where his powers come from. Does he really not want to know? Or is he scared of what he's going to find out? And how does he feel about what the old priestess said? Wow. Okay, you gotta give me a second to think about that because I don't want to inadvertently give any shit away. Mm, we'll take okay. headphones off. We can do that. We can. We can totally do that. Jess, Jess is right here. She can oh, go in the bathroom. Let's go outside. Kick her out. Long <laughs> trauma. She can put headphones I mean... off with blasting music. <laughs> 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 Headphones, headphones. Just stand outside for five minutes. <clears throat> it's minute. LA. I'm not standing outside for five minutes. <laughs> it's <laughs> sixty. It's, it's Inglewood. That's not, that's not, that's that, the weather is not the concern. Get nice. You just doxed yourself. Good job, buddy. We'll bleep. I don't think Good luck. It's out. okay. We'll bleep it in post. Good luck. Um, no, we won't. <laughs> fuck that. No one's gonna try to hunt me in Inglewood. That's a really bad idea. Um. So I think. Like, he, at the beginning, he genuinely did not care. Uh, he saw it as he was given a means to an end, uh, the tools in order to execute his craft, and he was just like, shit, this is pretty sure. sweet. I'm gonna just do this now. But I think after uh, the encounter with Lucy, and then also talking with, who was it at Raygrove that he spoke to? The priestess? The old lady. The old lady. Yeah, the old lady. <laughs> Oh gosh. The one with the Whoever owl. Whoever that ended up being. Yeah, yeah exactly. The one with the owl. Sister Kaya? That, Elder, Elder Great Moon. Elder, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that lady. I think it's like he's he's definitely curious now, at least much more than he was before, as to what exactly this is, because it's manifesting itself in really weird ways that he doesn't understand. And since it directly impacts him and his way of life, he doesn't jive with it too much. So uh, he definitely wants to try and figure out like what exactly is going on. But until then, I don't think there's going to be anything that like directly impacts the way he thinks about how he uses any of it. Um, mm -hmm. I think he still sees it as that tool. I think he's just a bit more curious now to where it came from. But it's not really like anything more than that, I think. Did Lucy trigger that? Yeah. Yeah, it was mostly Lucy's arrival uh, spontaneously in a dream. Because uh, mm -hmm. that's really like the first instance that Aelin has ever had of something like that going on. And so he's like, wait, what the... And then that's that's why he was asking, like, what are you? And how he got super confused when Lucy insinuated that she somehow was an offshoot of him. Or yeah. somehow manifested from him. So he is like just super yeah, confused. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. This is news. Yeah, hold on, hold on. Wait, what? Mm -hmm. Those whispers. <laughs> that was when did, I mean, what? that? No. When did you say that? Yeah. What do you mean? 
Did I just Tom Holland this shit? No, you don't. Yeah, that's fine. Um, <laughs> was I supposed to have my headphones off? Because I wasn't paying attention. No, no. I mean, this isn't <laughs> right, 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 okay. right. I just looked down and we, they had we, their uh, headphones we, off. And I was just like, what did I miss? We, we, I I we, we had a reaction. Like, we thought maybe we were getting something we shouldn't yeah. be. Uh, <laughs> because so. we legit know nothing about... You just told us she just showed up. Like, that's true. That, yeah, that's all. And we to got. be fair, she did. I mean, that's that's the whole manifestation. It, it it just came to him in a vision, in a dream, and it's the first time he's ever had a dream like that. And it's been, it's been, uh, you know, whatever that is. Nice, excellent. It's for sex. It's for sex. <laughs> Listen, wait, wait. You tossed one. You tossed my wow. mom. You have to split it. Greedy. Wow. All six fruit snacks? They have to split six fruit snacks. You, everyone knows a single serving of fruit snacks is a minimum of two packages. That's true. <laughs> that is not even the actual. <laughs> That's true. Don't know. It says serving's serving. one. No, no, it doesn't. Bullshit. That's a lot. <laughs> no, it's a lot. Let me ask this question so I can step away. And make great segues. I've thought of one, and I'm gonna use it after this. On a scale from one to ten, Sean, how much does Edwin really hate Faye at this point? Ooh, does he stick around the group with her to uh, to make sure she can't be a menace to the other Scar Scarlet Sword stuff, or is he growing to appreciate slash like her? Do you want your courtesy for snack like this? The music get louder. Because <laughs> it's a bard. You know? giddy, giddy. Inspiration. I think that... Well, so we already touched on this, right? There was that moment in the tavern where we all talked about, like, what the hell we're doing, right? Most and Adrian did. sort of, like, laid out, like, I'm here on business. I'm here for a job. I'm here to get the job done. That's it. And so he sees this group that he's with. Matt, oh, sorry, I, I hate to interrupt. Matt is on Amazon <laughs> right now getting fruit snacks. This is not a joke. Like I'm ordering a new box. fucking for real right now. <laughs> um, Important wow. priorities, Sean. Mm -hmm. Oh, That's what okay. he's doing while um, we're playing. Yeah, for real. Um, so, like, he definitely sees the party not necessarily even as friends. He mostly sees them, again, just like his powers, as a means to an end, right? He has this goal where he wants to figure out what the Blightlings are doing, where it all came from, and how to stop it. And so that is kind of all he's here for. Um... Although he definitely wants everybody else in the group to... Ooh, wait, that's interesting, actually. Oh, da, 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 da. Not everyone in the group. We're supposed to die, apparently. <laughs> no! <laughs> Only Clark's supposed to die. Anyways. Um, He's an I honorary. <laughs> no, it's okay. He, he's had some moments of vulnerability in the past with the group where he, he himself has thought that he was beginning to falter and that his emotions were starting to get in the way of the job. And so he has, um, a couple of times, not, not often, but a couple of times has had to mentally correct course and kind of get himself back on track so that he can refocus. Um, but if we want to give it a number... <laughs> what so like one is dislike and like ten is like 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 the question was going to one is one to still put in prison yeah 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 one is yeah. one is not killing, killing. Uh -huh. ten ten is in love. love okay wow that's the range yeah that's, that's yeah, yeah. <laughs> love maybe one so, to five kill. <laughs> not one to ten makes sense um, yeah there's a lot of range yeah. I would say like a solid four like, he's currently, he's basically operating as her parole officer right now, to be honest. So, Damn. that's kind of where that relationship is stemming from. Um, but, you know, 
Yeah, it, 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 I'm I'm curious to see how all of all of that unfolds, for sure. That's at least two points higher than it was when you got to this part. Beyond any reasonable doubt, yeah. yes. Yeah. Like we were at a solid one point one, yeah, yeah. Like at the start, <laughs> you know, like point one away from knives, just stabbing her. There were knives pulled in our in our intro episode. There were. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, there were. Yeah. Nice. Let's see the other side of the coin now. Mm. Megan. Edwin seems to hate Faye's guts, and Yasnip has been incredibly guarded. Has this frustrated Faye? Is that why she drunkenly asked her brother why men are so difficult? Oh. That's, yeah, I think so. I think it's a lot of... Take into perspective a lot of the people that she's interacted with, including men. They're either like family members or they're other members of like performing troops or things like that. And they're generally boisterous, verbose people. And then to meet these crusty fucks and it's just like, <laughs> like, excuse me, what? Yeah. Like even, even regular people that she meets, she can usually win them over fairly well. And I think these two are just not cracking and she doesn't know how to respond to that, but not in a way that she's trying to manipulate them. I think she's just not used to not being liked mm -hmm. in a way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So Talking about your family. Did you come up with all your family members, or did Matt help you, and are they inspired by anybody? I came up with all of them, and I think I, I, I named them, Matt, I threw Matt descriptions, and he sent me, like, celebrities of who he thinks they would be kind of based around. <laughs> because he needed, I need he that. needed, I need that. He needed, when in California. He needed six voices to have in his head because i have yeah, sending that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, so he yeah, needed yeah. he needed a frame of reference for like what people were gonna like sound like and what their mannerisms would be at one if we were ever to meet them or two if they were ever to like interact um but yeah i don't i don't think they're based on anything i didn't grow up in a big family and i always kind of wish i had um mm -hmm. and so i think it's kind of like and I'm the oldest sibling, and I wish I wasn't. So I think, to me, having a big family where I was the baby is kind of like my alter ego, in a way. Ooh. And it's like, it's just a way for me to, like, step out of, like, being the oldest of two. And then step into, like, kind of a bigger, just total, something totally different. Nice. I will also pop in just a tiny peek behind the DM curtain for me. I, I, I do that almost all the time with NPCs that have any level of import, not just for the voice, but to have a picture in my mind of what they look like and like who yeah. they are. So anybody that's important, typically I'll figure out like, who do I think would play this person in the live action movie of this campaign? Should we, should we say who we picked please. for the new- I could share the, one. Please. Well, we could pick, oh, so we've interacted- you wanna read them? Well, we've interacted with mom and with uh -huh. two of the brothers, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, 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 there's more than two of the brothers, I think. I think I'm at three so far. You're at, yeah, three. You've messaged three of your brothers and your mom. Yeah. You can go ahead. Uh, I don't have the list okay. in front of me. I, I want to know Raphael your mom, so bad. Your mom Same. is Helen Mirren. Helen oh. Mirren. Luke, who is the brother that she most recently messaged, yeah, yeah. Uh, is Hugh Grant. Oh! Really? Uh, it's just controversial the, right now. Dane, yeah. this is my favorite one. Dane, who's the brother that's in the military, who she messaged a little while ago, it was actually one of her first sendings, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, is Tom Hardy. Bye. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And Bye. Uh, Rafe, or Raphael, is Tom Hiddleston. No! <laughs> I need a moment. <laughs> I I have loved Rafe before. I love him <laughs> ten times more now. That's the vibe of of who that person is. Oh my so. god. Um. That's so anyways, great. I love that. Matt, Matt, let's see more of the. Oh, oh gosh. Behind. B D M. Mm hmm No. Behind Never the mind. screen. It yes. is the screen. Facts. This comes from at Leah Pritchett and me personally. Who's that? What was your inspiration for Raygrove? Ooh, that's a great question. 
Yeah, mm -hmm. that actually is um, <laughs> probably the biggest uh, piece of the inspiration process for Raygrove was the Ewoks. Yes! On Endor. Because they're all halflings. Uh, definitely. Yeah, yeah, they they are all, well, most of Raygrove is halflings, but also the living amongst the trees thing, the little bit more tribal mm -hmm. um, culture and society. Yeah, a lot of that came from that. Yep. yep. Oh I, can't, I can't find my Ewoks. <laughs> I have them though. Ewoks. Oh, oh, I got them. I got them. There's also a little bit of Avatarish stuff in there, but it's Ooh, pretty heavily. I see it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Oh my god, all yeah. the pets. What is that? Oh what, is that? what is that? Oh. What are I those? Think... Oh, they're Ewoks. Those? Oh, Ewoks. I thought you were getting Elfie because pets. <laughs> no, I collect Ewoks. That is the most amazing sentence you have ever said. <laughs> I collect Ewok. I collect Ewok. Long list. I have e I have an Ewok on my keys on my keys. And your wicked. cat murders them. He does. He loves to play with them. Let's go. He'll, he'll carry them around in his mouth. <laughs> Another one for you, Matthew. If you can tell us what is one ability or thing that could have happened in the fight with the hag that you didn't get to share? And was there anything in that fight that surprised you? Please hold. Holding. <laughs> Literally any of us getting yeeted into the fucking ass in this space. <laughs> oh, true! We yeah, he's the only one who could have asked that question. If any of us asked, he would have been like, no, fuck you. <laughs> That acid was the big problem that we avoided. It's like 0. 0.65. Yeah, it's really small. Like, I can't read that far. Okay. Um, there was a, a stench thing that incredibly never came into effect, unless I missed it, which I don't think I did, because every time that somebody got within range of her, she would then quickly get out of range before their turn started. Yeah. And it happens on the start of your turn. The and amount so of defeat that... on Jess's face with that was just... yeah, The amount of times you're gonna make me fucking throw yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you, it never yeah. happened somehow. Because you were mostly dealing with the wolves, I think. Uh, so there was that. Uh, quick and death did happen. Yeah. What? That was The thing that rough. made us lose uh, a death save. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, that, that was bad. bad. That was By the way, Matt... Bad. I'm taking fucking notes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. No, no, was that an no, aura? Say it. no was, say it. was that an aura or was that something was like that she breath? cast on no, us? No, that was a once per day cone oh, ability God. that she has. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not more than because we she could started just the day quick. with that. Yeah, that was the first thing she did to you in the morning. No, yeah. we yeah. just started the fight. No. She did the cone in the thing. Fight. In the no, fight. you. Wait, we started that morning. Walking or like we oh, walked no, that in. That was something else. That was something else. That, that was... was your negative to con saves. Yeah. That was part. Yeah, that was part of the journey to get there and the environment around it. You lost some, uh, and that was because you failed. You guys failed the oh, skill yeah. check. Oh yeah, that also oh. hurt us so bad. Yeah, where, so you where had we had our to con saves because of that. And our movement speed and being movement reduced. Slowed. Yep. Oh, yeah, okay. Well. Both they of those were things. Yeah, both of those things were previous uh, regional effect kind of things. But the quicken death is what she used at the beginning Killer. of the fight that took away a death sight. That's from some of you. And then one thing, the one thing that she never got to use uh, was Blight Rot, which is a legendary action that costs two actions. I wonder if I can tell you this all. I think so. It's, it's very dumb. Go for it. Fight Do it. Blight Hag. Um, let's see. She can target one creature within 30 feet of her. Oh, this is why I never use it that is currently poisoned by her bite or her stench of death. So her bite poisons and her stench of death, which never got triggered, poisons. And if you're poisoned, she can target you with Blight Rot. And the target suffers 3d8 poison damage, must make oh. a con save, or contract Blight Rot disease. The disease target can't regain hit points, and its con score is immediately reduced by 1d4, and is reduced by additional 1d4 for every 24 hours that elapses while diseased. If oh the disease reduces God. the target's con score to zero, the target dies. What? Yeah. <laughs> that 
That's fucked so up, that, Matthew. That never that never happened because well, you have to go a long time without getting your disease gotten rid of. Yeah. For that for to for it to get zero. You have a but clarity. the rest of it We were a long it, way away <laughs> from anything. Thank well, God I... we were never in melee range, right? Yeah. Not at the starts of your turns. I have does it lesser restoration cure disease? Yes, less restoration can yeah, get rid I of it. That. And also, lay on hands can get rid of it. Yeah, I can. Yeah. I uh, yeah, it should be able to now. I'm yeah, pretty sure I just spent five points for yeah. that. Is it level five? Yeah, I'm okay. pretty sure I have that now. So I think I'm good. Yeah. So yeah, uh, it still didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> Was there anything that surprised you from that fight? The fact that we lived. <laughs> the fact that nobody I don't think anyone made a death save. No, we never nope. went, no one ever went down. No, no one, one ever down. yeah, no one even went unconscious. Yeah, that was pretty surprising because you guys uh like spread things really evenly. Yeah. And mm -hmm. forced her to spread things evenly by moving to different places that then forced her to move to other places. Yeah. So she never got a chance to like really hone in on any one person. And yeah. Except I it was very well done. Yeah, Aiden well, got some, really low. There was some. It was really was like one. I, I, I got down to five good points. I got low. Uh, by the really? end of the fight, but I was down at one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah there was some like good... literally last round of well, combat, I had five good points. Well, mm. if I hadn't done shield, whatever the shield thing that gave you temporary hit points, you would have you would have gone. I would have gone down for sure. Yeah. yeah. Like and that that those temp hit HP was action. actually like turbo clutch, honestly, because like that's the only reason why I pro like. So here's the thing. Matt created an ability that says you automatically fail a death save, knowing damn well that every single death save that I roll for the first time is a natural one. True. So no fucking doubt Eowyn would be dead otherwise. <laughs> There's no doubt in my mind. Like, it was just- God, I remember it... you sending me that picture. Jesus fucking Christ. That was tonight. I hate it here. <laughs> anyway. Hey, hey, you survived. <laughs> Everything's fine. This is fine. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. But yeah, you know, I think there was some really good prep before the battle. From what I did and from what other people did to like bump temporary hit points and bump like um yeah. stuff. That I think we're clutch at the end of it. Nice. Brian, let's make you talk. Because you're very, very quiet. <laughs> I have a question <laughs> here that says Yasnip has been slowly revealing more of his secrets to select members of the party. How are you determining when, where, who, and what to disclose? And why is Yasnip so guarded about all this stuff anyway? Mm. I don't think I can actually mm. answer this. Whoa now! I think I can actually answer the second part. Um... But then I can. You're going I can to definitely answer my next one. Well, I I can put it in context. Um, <laughs> yeah. It is it is not hidden from the players that Yasnip is in fact a changeling. That is yeah. where a lot of his guard comes from. Um, and the reason why that he is very slow to not necessarily just trust individuals, but also divulge what he is looking for or spread information about himself and he's very much a person that mixes up the pot and he's very mm -hmm. good at disappearing and he's very good at hiding uh in plain sight so that that's kind of his main roots and mm -hmm. i will say that everything that has happened has happened for a reason and it is very specific it is very determined however he's not a very wise guy and he's not a very smart guy so it takes him a little bit of time to uh to figure it all out which is why i think it's great that it's been going on for a full month because there's these points where he has these uh sparks of what he imagines is going on and these points where he thinks he might be on to a certain branch and once that he does mm -hmm. that it's realistically something that i maybe thought of two three four five sessions ago but it's just a mm -hmm. slow unveil for him because I want it to be more reflective of his capacity to make decisions and form opinions. Can I throw a side question? Before you do a second one, Cameron. Sure. If his changelingness wasn't revealed in the manner that it was, 
would who how would he revealed it to first if things would have gone the way you thought it would have if well, Vaughn, would anyone know? No. Or would, would anyone, anyone know? know right now? So, Nobody would know. This was something yeah. that Matt and I had talked about in depth. <laughs> mm. I was gonna make every one of you motherfuckers believe that I had disguised self, Ooh. and I was gonna play it off as I was casting that spell. Nice. Mm -hmm. I would have started doing spells math so fast, my yep. dude. Like oh, I would have been yeah. like, yeah. you got. But you've already cast, and you're uh, mm -hmm. but. Yep. And level. <laughs> there, there is an invocation for warlocks that makes the sky self at will. Oh, yeah. Oh. It's called um, Mask of Many Faces. Yeah, Mask of yeah. Many Faces. That's so true. So there is a lot of mechanical stuff that him and I had both talked about excruciatingly to try to get things in certain perspectives and plan it all out. And then Vana cast Moonbeam. And it all kind of <laughs> all went out the broke. window. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think as far as reveals go, if he was going to tell somebody straight out, he wouldn't have told anybody by now. Okay. Whoa. Wild. Um, Wild. I, I will even divulge Wild. that the world. besides Eclipse and Brightwing, there are Five that? others that he knows of that know. So it is a very close guarded secret. Nice. My second question, which you will definitely answer. Mm -hmm. Who the F is Yasna's patron? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> no, Megan. <laughs> it wasn't me. It wasn't me. Others oh, are that, curious. Yeah, no. <laughs> uh, that, that is a definite headphones off one if people want it, but. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, my real second question is mm. Brywin told Yasnip her true name. Does that change any trust that he may have for her? And how do you feel about that trust that she put in him? The journey with Brightwing has been a journey. Fact. Even to the point that I will explicitly state in the open, because I don't know if Leah actually knows this yet. I don't know. Um, the question that Yasnip asked, he masked as being a question about Fey. His question of if you can trust somebody that won't tell a lie was in fact oh. about Brightwing. Ooh. And he was trying to get the wisdom that Brightwing has as to whether or not she could be trusted, and she told him no. I knew you were asking oh, it about me, and she knew oh, you were you? asking it. Mm. Yeah, I picked up on it. Mm. Um, <laughs> but that was one of the ones where <clears throat> there was this period between the initial meet that they had and the initial reveal through Moonbeam as to what he actually was, and I will say, in Yasnip's regard, he he feels a little aback by the fact that the stuff that Brightwing had said to him was also in a way similar to what Brightwing did with her name. And so the, the confliction that there was with me not expressing, or Yasnip not expressing who he actually was, he kind of looked at, and he's currently marinating on the idea of, is that okay? Like, she did the same thing, but I was criticized for it. It's kind of where he's at. Mm. <laughs> That's interesting, because for her, it's, it's a cultural thing. And for him, it's a way of living. Yeah. Like, for kind of like a deep Whoa. dive into a name thing. Once you get your name after your Wakana, it's kind of just, it's looked as childish to continue to use your true name as an everyday sort of speaking mm -hmm. terms. And the only people that really use your true names are like maybe your parents and your mate as sort of a term of endearment, sort of speak. Um, so for her, it's 
and like telling someone an outsider, especially your true name, it that hasn't really happened before. So she doesn't really know like her doing that was a big deal because she doesn't know like the protocol, so to speak, of mm. like, do I tell somebody this? But she, she also recognized what you went through and she felt like this is something I should reveal because you put so much trust in me mm. that I haven't been doing that to you. And I feel like even though this is something completely different in culture aspects, this is something for you that means meaningful. Mm. And and he caught it that way. Like that that's the that's the big part where he didn't really He's very slow to react. He's very methodical when it comes to information that he gets. And it is one of those things where in open, uh, the connections are made between right wing and Yasnip not being extremely different, which is kind of fitting. But the, the overarching question that he's wrestling with right now is why did that initial conversation go the way that it did when she's there? And it, it hasn't dawned on him yet that she isn't familiar with changelings and she isn't familiar with how that they are and how they act and how that they uh, adapt. And it's one of those clashes of culture things where for changelings, it is very much a culture thing as well. I would assume, Matt, like the name changes, yeah. but the individual is the same. And it is in fact a different name for each for each version of them but it is the same person yeah. as a whole i mean for brightwing brightwing as she said brightwing and araya are the same they are equally mm -hmm. her um it's just brightwing is what is she goes by because mm -hmm. that's what you're supposed to go by mm. nice cultures you know, I, I have a quick follow up here uh, for for Matt specifically. What is the public perception on changelings as we as players understand it? Like, did we talk about this? Because I, I don't recall it exactly. When I had it, with I don't think so. Not in game, at least. Um. <laughs> I can't remember if we touched on this to some degree. I, I feel like we did maybe a little bit. Um, oh, we... I think we maybe... You and I have it in a chat somewhere, but... Some people might have rolled to see if they were, like, familiar with Changelings. Yeah, I'm pretty sure she did. Because he told you. Okay. None of us okay. had any other reason to think about it. Um... I would say that most everybody else besides Brightwing would have some base level knowledge that they exist. And it's not, it's mostly a curiosity and mystery sort of um, view of that race. Because in Anthara, changelings almost exclusively do not reveal themselves as changeling, they just live in society is whatever they choose to live as and then change that up if they need to um and typically make a point of not letting people know that they're changelings so it's very hard to get any concept of what their culture is like or anything like that so it's mostly just like um i'm trying to think of an example that would be useful but it's it's just a lot of mystery and not knowing what that like knowing it's a thing and maybe it's a um, conspiracy and they're not really real, but if they are, like, what can they do? And are they just all around? And yeah, it's mostly just mystery, curiosity, uh, unknowns, I would say. It just reminds me of, like, um, in the Marvel Universe, the alien race that can, are they basically changeling that can just look like anybody? And then after they revealed, everyone's like, well, has the people been the people that they've said they've been the entire time or has it been this thing so which is the oh, problem oh yeah yeah with, yeah i get what yeah that's the problem with like being changeling and changeling culture is if people know that you are a changeling then it's hard to trust whether 
like the person that they think is you is always you or whether you might be someone else in their daily life and in, mm -hmm. yeah so there's a lot of potential trust issues that can arise from that so it's much Ooh. more simple and clean to keep it under wraps and i love the paranoia <laughs> Let's talk about more duo dynamics. Jess. The dynamic between Eclipse and Brightwing has been interesting. It has definitely seemed like Eclipse cares about Brightwing and has her best interest in mind, but her big sistering has been met with some pushback lately. What does Eclipse, Eclipse think of that relationship and how it is playing out? Well, I mean, she's kind of explained it to Brightwing. She's like, she's apologized that it's a tendency that she's always had. So it's acknowledging that Eclipse and Brightwing are both adults, and that she's not a child, and she doesn't need to treat her like one. Nice. Another one for you. This is a very good one, at least. Early on, Eclipse's struggles in combat seem to be a major issue for you. But lately, she has been absolutely tearing it up. How has that changed your perspective on playing her, if at all? And what do you look forward to in her playing her over the next arc slash arcs? So my brother also played a tabaxi a while back and he was a ranger. Um, he couldn't roll above a 10 and uh, he would roll twos. He couldn't even get the decency of failing. <laughs> <laughs> he was very angry all the time. <laughs> well, yeah, that tracks. Um, it's a halfling so like failure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, um, yeah, it does. It's very fun. Um, I think the the hardest thing with Eclipse is that I I played a fighter in 4e and I had a really good time with it because we made it a very specific way so that I could play it. And the 4e dynamic is very different from 5e. You have a lot more options as a as a melee. You have more like descriptive abilities in melee. So 5e is always a little less exciting if that makes sense if you're not playing a spell caster you're not really maintaining a lot of uh yeah. like any like kind of action spell. economy at all yeah. it's literally just i hit him all right i'll see you in 10 minutes like it's just like <laughs> yeah 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 and it's and it's not a bad thing like everyone's doing really well with their action economy it's really helpful um i think the biggest issue was trying to figure out how to actually utilize being next to somebody because nobody in our party should have been sitting next to me at all but i wanted that to be part of her character really badly like i wanted to be able to help somebody if they're next to me because i shouldn't be but i never could so we couldn't do it until like adrian came along or until like i've been sitting next to, to vana for long enough which was really funny i didn't expect that to work out like it did so <laughs> i think it's getting better I, I don't mean for her to go as feral as she does, but honestly, given the stress of everything, it doesn't really feel that out of character. Uh, yeah. No. So it's like, the cat and again, guy. she's she's not used to being out on her own, essentially, for this long. She's supposed to go home and relax and do her thing. And then being out here, it's like, I need to go home. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. So I think it's getting better. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it is what it is. The dice do what they do. It's There's not much I can do about it. Nice. Let's go to Sean, so y'all can keep talking and hear each other. Hmm, which one do I ask? I have so many. Uh, let's go with this one. Well, there's two in one. Does Edwin see himself as the leader of the group? Or is he waiting for someone to step up? Ooh. Does anyone else see Edwin as the leader of the group? That's, a good <laughs> that's, that's the more important question. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think this was one of my questions. <laughs> Edwin is very much so not in the position to put himself up on a pedestal. He does not have enough faith in himself to do that. So Nobody. he's not outright like trying to be like, hey, gang, this is the plan, this is what we're doing, let's get it done. It may seem that way, but that's just because he's trying to get the job done, right? And so he's, his, his initiative is more so to make sure that all of the end of all of his bargains get met. And so I think that's where a lot of that might come from. But he's not like making active steps 
to like lead this group by any means. Okay. Talking about Edwin and the group, I have two questions that I would like answered. Is there a conscious decision as to why Edwin endorses some actions the rest of the group takes, like partying in the tavern in Raygrove while speaking to Eclipse, but overtly avoids joining in any of them almost to a point of even taking offense to being invited to join? I want to credit of that. That's, that's uh, from Anonymous. He's not a party person. I mean, like, yeah, I mean, it's like, it's it's wild because, like, he is low-key kind of an introvert. Like, he's not he's not uh, somebody who's going to actively go out and, like, seek entertainment. He's, like, all business, right? Unless it's like, Fennel. It, unless it's Fennel. I was going to mention that. But even Fennel was business because he was getting information during that entire was interaction. It? And on top of that, he also was getting her to tan the hides take with the tentacles, see what we could do with those. So, like, Tangle even and... then, hey, yeah, well, Matt, that's... shut the fuck up! Shut the fuck up! Shut the... No, not you. <laughs> You're just muted! <laughs> anyways, uh, anyways, um, yeah, even the interaction with Fennel, all business, right? So, like, right. he's, he's a no-games kind of person. Like, he's, he's here to do his job, and then once the job is done, he'll move on to the next. That's just kind of his whole deal. Okay. Oh god. Edwin <laughs> has shown more patience and compassion to NPCs than he has shown the party members. Is this because he holds the group to a higher standard? It's because the group incessantly pisses him off all the fucking time. Like, like, here's the thing. Like, uh... he, he loves having a plan. Right? right? Having a plan is great. Mm -hmm. This bandit camp shit made him so pissed. Because he was so tired of us talking for 45 minutes about alternative courses of action when we already settled on a plan. And he's just like, just execute the damn plan. We don't need to come up with 30 alternative versions of the plan. Just do the thing. And so... Like, and that's that's part of the reason why, like, you know, he wanted to sit down with the group over the downtime that we had before the hag showed up to go over combat formations, make sure everybody was just on the same page so that when these situations came up, we already knew what we were doing so that we didn't have to sit down and, like, you know, like, do the bandit cam nonsense over and over and over again, you know? Um, but, I don't know, like... For the most part, uh, it's kind of backstory shit, though. Uh... Oh. Please uh. do tell. No, I'm kidding. Nah. I, nah. I, I kind of want to. I, I kind of want to interject a little bit of a thing because you brought up the hag. Edwin's the one that broke the formation that we had planned on. Yes, and he did that for a very specific reason. Because if he didn't, we would have fucking died. Straight However, up. my my I guess the point of my question is, do you feel that that was a point where Edwin had kind of that clear, concise idea that you can plan for a lot, but you can't plan for everything and deviations are necessary? Yeah, like it's it's never been the idea that deviations are not a necessity, because especially in like moments like those when none of us are able to actually get to the main threat. Like, those are moments when you just have to retool. There was no reason for us <laughs> to, to change the Bandit Camp idea as many times as we did. So that's why he got, like, as frustrated with that as he did, and he was just, like, trying to get us to move along with it. Um, but, like, yeah, like, he's always ready to be adaptable, right? Like... He he gauged everything that was going on in the hag encounter, and was like, "We're gonna we're gonna die if somebody does not get up to this hag. You have to stay with the group, so you can't do that." Did Yasnip? Did he feel is, bad when Brightwing mm, started getting hit by the creature that he let get to her? No, because the the creature that got to Brightwing was 
a uh, monstrously lower threat. And so he had, he had faith that nobody would die should he break that formation and focus like the primary issue in that combat, um, which is why he made that decision. Otherwise, like if he genuinely believed that those wolves were gonna cause so much of a problem that he wouldn't be able to leave for like two or three rounds to take care of the hag, he wouldn't have done it. And I mean, ultimately like we probably would have died. Um, but because like he just kind of took a look around realized that this is probably the only route forward for us to survive. Okay, what's the collateral? Whether or not the collateral is big enough, he doesn't care, he's gonna do it. But he still keeps the collateral in the back of his mind so that he knows what he's dealing with. So it's okay for A. Edwin to make the executive decision to break the plan or break formation, but if anyone else were to do it, would he have the same reaction and would it still be okay? If Eclipse had moved faster on the pole instead of Aedwin. If Aedwin had not done the Misty Step and she had instead done um, Feline Agility, 100% A-OK. -okay. Because, like, that was his plan initially. He, like, somebody, it didn't matter really who, as long as there was somebody who could deal enough melee damage to this hag and get her distracted from the rest of the group, that was the goal. Who was able to execute that? It just depended on how the rounds ended up falling. And when the opportunity arose for him to take up that mantle, he went ahead and did it, right? Because so can you see how it just had to happen. So can you see how, given that that was our last big combat that we had had, can you see why the headspace of the group was to perhaps a little overkill, but was to plan for alternatives because we did not have an alternative plan and Brightwing and I were left def like effectively defenseless against a melee creature? Yes. Can you see why, as the prey mindset of why we need to plan for an alternative action? I will I also will... throw something in here, which is interesting to me, that this conversation has brought up that I haven't really thought about before in D&D. But everybody, all these players, oh, well, no, all these characters have some abilities that make them useful in combat, and this is how it always is in D&D. &D. Mm -hmm. But the vast majority of this group and most groups are not trained for combat. Yeah. And specifically not, like, attack, defense, plans, strategy, any of that stuff. So, like, without going into anybody's backstory, there's a little bit of additional combat training that is mostly like just protection based but there's no one else that has been like trained to this is how you go and kill a thing and this is how you set up to fight that thing and then take it down and i don't think that we think about that as players very often because mm -hmm. we know how to fight in D, &D. Mm -hmm. but it is interesting that like and so i can see where like age wins mindset is to a degree uh, I know how to do this sort of thing, and these chuckleheads, as useful as they are, might not. And so he ha has like a little bit of a stronger pull on setting up the plan. And then also to what Megan was saying in like phase point, them wanting to, to try to figure it, things out to a greater degree because that this is not an experience that they've often been involved in. And I will say the difference between the hag encounter and the bandit encounter was intel. Because we got way the fuck more information about this bandit camp than we did about this hag that spontaneously just existed in the world, right? So, like, we were able to actually make a plan specifically designed for this bandit camp. Whereas with the hag, there was nothing we could prep for for that. There was no way we could have expected a cone of ended death save to just fuck our shit up like so like that's that's why um train of thought it's gone i i i yeah, actually yeah. i like it a lot though because it creates this because we the characters have never sat down and discussed the the encounters after the hag like there, there was a lot of emotion that happened there was a lot of stuff that went on and with the bandit encounter being the next essential combat encounter it 
I think it's very interesting that from a player level and even from a character level that it has created this this sense of indecision mm -hmm. which which is really cool because I also understand like as a as a player it's like yeah we gotta it's better to fight it in groups than it is in whatever we don't want to just go in there and get hit from all sides we don't want to make it a bigger thing than it actually is but the fact that we took that time I think really indicates the effects that we've had when it comes to trying to strategize and when it comes to trying to mingle as a group and it has shown just like we've had rocky uh portions of rp specifically mm -hmm. now of rp with oh play. that's RP. what i heard initially too <laughs> i was like you gotta get that checked out man <laughs> <laughs> sounds like water stones <laughs> yeah <laughs> of role play <laughs> specifically <laughs> now it's kind of that point where people are comfortable enough with each other to at least state openly that uh they have kidney stones or they have some grumbles uh that are coming up with combat specifically uh, a few hiccups that they can't quite get over well this specific combat for brightwing's point of view everyone immediately was like we're gonna use clerk as bait and brightwing was the only one like why <laughs> like this little guy is just clerk is expendable and, and exactly everyone was just like he's expendable nope. we can just do it and like brighton was the only one that she was like and clerk almost died like i was gonna she, save she that damn right. goblin if it came down okay to well i did have questions about that the actually. goblin thank yeah. you I'm you curious, did kill the goblin going into the fight i know how brian you feel about him as a player but did any other characters not think he was expendable besides brighton I mean, yeah. I would have been Yosnip said. Yosnip doesn't think he was expendable. To a, to a point. No, no, I, I, I said that he was. What, didn't I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I said he did. was. As, yeah, from Yasnip's perspective, yes, he is. Brian's okay. perspective, I would have brought him back. Is it, Wait, is he still expendable in Yasnip's perspective? Or is things changed? No, he's before? earned it. No, he's, okay. he's fucking earned it. Like, he did kill the guy. He he's killed fucking the one guy it. that we told we yeah. would let him live. <laughs> he's earned it. Clert is. Like, we're gonna look like, into an insurance no one, for a health plan. Like no we're gonna. Was, like, we're gonna talk. talking. Like as soon insurance. as like everyone was like, Clert's here. Clert's here. Everyone was on the same wavelength. And then Bright was like, Yeah, he's here. Why? Why does yeah, that matter? <laughs> I I will say that the the way that it went was a little bit different than I expected. That was actually gonna be one of the times that Yasnip had used shape change in combat. Ooh. If Clert went down. He was gonna turn into a goblin and go pick him up. Oh, buddy! Because nobody else was around to see, so As all of his clothes and armor fall off. Well, I mean, <laughs> yeah, it happens. It, it's a, it's it's a, a thing. Naked goblin running. <laughs> yeah, that has a lot more hit points respect. than Clert. <laughs> I respect the fuck out of that, Brian. Yeah. Fuck yes, but yeah. So I mean, so part of the part of the the indecision was Brightwing just being like. Everyone having this plan, like, okay, we're gonna use this guy, we're gonna get out. And Brian being like, let's not use him, please, because he's just a little person that well, helped us out. And it was made especially <laughs> funny by the fact that he was totally down and was tricked into believing he was be able to handle exactly. this. Exactly, everyone scream. was like, you got this, and like, he had no idea the danger he was in. The scream of the crossbow like, No, 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 I didn't tell him he could handle it. I told him he was very him. fast, and he mm -hmm. did yeah. outrun him. Yeah, he, he did. He did yeah. outrun. The scream yeah. when he got hit with the crossbow bolt was the best thing, like, ever. It was so funny. It was great. But, you know, our moral compass there, uh, I felt, was a little... Yeah. True neutral. Yeah. That bitch came out of nowhere and fucking tried to stab me. That is true. He's In the middle of the wrong. night! <laughs> true. Oh, I love this goblin. Talk about moral compasses, this uh, goblin's like... Killer. Yeah. Okay, but that's also yeah. the other thing. That's also the other thing. Like, what we're probably gonna get into next game is like we just killed a whole bunch of people. Like, like he like, said. Again, he said his dying words were, "We deserved it. We deserved it." We deserved it. But, again, but again, this is like that weird moral compass thing of like, okay. What right do we have to decide who lives or dies? The mayor they determined and contracted he us to do this. He's just said to take care of them. That doesn't mean kill them. That is correct. The... No, no, no. no, no. The mayor pulled the trigger. We were just the bullet. It doesn't. It doesn't not mean to not kill them. Yeah, <laughs> that is true. That's also true. We but you know, 
Can't say all. It's it's just one of those things that we're gonna have to probably deal with next game of like mm. we we took life and li taking life it has an impact no matter how bad a person was. I feel I feel worse about the jar. Yeah. This this I actually <laughs> I, I'm sorry because it's on the same topic really quick if I may Megan. Yeah. Um. Why? Because you you've stated this openly before about you're not sure how Brightwing anticipates or how she feels about it. The idea of self-defense from the previous encounter, uh, yeah. where we had gotten attacked by bandits, who did not have yellow bandanas, by the way, correct? Correct me if I'm wrong. No. Okay, they did not have yellow people. bandanas. Do, do you think that Brightwing is able to make the connection of how those individuals treated our group, where they attacked him at a point where they were very weak and very susceptible to danger, and how Again, these people would do is, a similar thing and have This is probably going to be more of an that? RP thing. This is going to be a more RP thing mm -hmm. if it gets into it. But I will say, right, we totally understands why we did it. But mm -hmm. she doesn't like that we were law, judge, and executioner. She doesn't think that we had that right to do it. We had a right to maybe take care of them. And like, like, but uh, right, like killing them. Like that was probably, a, that's a step too far for her. But she still went along with it because it was the group decision. But she's, she, now that it's over and she, we're going to get into the, the aftermath of it, it's going to be a wrestle with mm -hmm. it. Interesting. Hmm. It's Anyways. like, it's the, it's the argument of like the death penalty here in IRL. Like, yeah. So. On a much happier note. Matt is currently note. checking real quick. He's checking to see whether or not we know who those bandits were. Uh, I will have to watch the VOD to know for sure, but I don't have anything in my notes from the session about that. I, what I know is that when Which Mayor bandits? Maddox told you about the bandits that he was concerned about, he mentioned those bandanas. So that's how you know about yeah. them. So he, he was there, must though. have been able to identify them yeah. and told us who they were yeah. because he knew who those bandits were. Yeah. It had it been, been an ongoing, ongoing issue with these bandits, bandits with the golden, golden bandanas. bandanas that been, been, right. Oh, no. Okay. Cool. What was yours, Megan? Do you have a question? I was gonna ask Matt if there were real people in the in the jar. Okay, well, I was just gonna ask all of you what your current theory is, because I'm not gonna tell you that answer, but I am I curious. There were fucking people in the jar. Megan thinks it's a scry. I think it's a scry too. Faye thinks it's real people. I'm hoping it's a scry. Megan thinks it's some kind of permanented scry or like some kind of a projection that was There's ruined. No shot. It was a scry though, because that's so Maybe. many people. Maybe I just it know that it's a fucking cool idea, Matt. Maybe but you can scry. You can scry on a location. You can scry on a location. Yes. Brian thinks that it is actually a pocket dimension, and that opening it did let them go. Yasnip mm. thinks those people are fucking dead. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but he thinks um, they're real. He thinks I that they are real. Did I ever send you the final, the final thing that I drew? I don't think I did. Yes, you did. You posted did it, you and we were all just like. Did I? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I posted a draft, draft, draft yeah. about it. Right? Uh, I never think... mind. I remember a draft, but I don't know if it was. I, I think they were captured souls, and we let them out. But that's what I want to think, at least. I think I don't even know if they were souls necessarily. I think one theory that I have, and multiple theories, but I think maybe it truly was just a diagram, not even real people, just a weird sense of illusionary magic that just is physical in that and. By opening it, you just, there was you just dust the in there the jar. Dust, that might have been there like were particles. Thing. Again, that's just one theory. Again, it also could just be real ass people. We don't know. I'm I'm ready for the mental gymnastics in mm -hmm. like 80 sessions when we actually find out. No, and Matt's yeah, gonna tell us like right an now. Earthquake, like <laughs> All right, Matt. Eight weeks ago, nope. it was nuts. No chance. What's we're in the gonna... What's in the bottle? What's in, what's in, can I know, Matthew? Is the bottle our door? No. The no, 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 Can I know? No, you may not know. No. That's it. Is no? There's no answer. No, there's no, no. answer. Maybe, maybe. Well, there is an bottle. answer, but I'm not going to tell you of, it right now. There was just a whole bunch of genies, you know, because it was in a bottle. We just, mm. And we get a wish now. In a bottle. <laughs> there, <laughs> there is a very clear answer, and I put those things in front of you for a very specific reason, and you do not get to know the answers or the reasons right now. God damn it. Why? Wait, 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 wait. Does that mean that we could have figured it out? 
I don't think you rolled really with high the highest enough. intelligence in the group at a okay, fourteen. Okay, okay. Do you this, think we could have figured it out? I, I think this is nope. this this is a I'll, I'll phrase this very We're specifically. Not smart beans. <laughs> and this is something that I've been asked before as a DM. Were all of the hints available in that location for us to figure out what was actually happening with those things, and we missed it? Please oh hold. Uh, oh, let no. me check one thing. I now need to Guys, watch the that VOD all over again. Yeah, I, it must be. He's, I hear the scrolling. He's still <laughs> scrolling. <Yeah. laughs> you want me to ask another question? Uh, stop looking, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> he, it's a world. It's the whole world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's got the whole world. It is I'll say this also that I very fully and appreciate world. cliffhangers. I, I love in his in his ram. In his, his ram. ram. He's got the whole world. It is um, the whole world. Okay, so there is something that there is information that you guys had and potentially still have access to regarding whatever she was up to or does that you have not explored, it would not have explained necessarily anything. So mm. I, I'm not saying that you could have figured it out, Ugh. but it may have given you some more insight that may or may not have altered your actions had you gone a different route in the order you did things. Oh my god. And you may or may not Matt, still come across the answer. I have finals to take. I cannot spend my days thinking about this game I fast. will not tell you any secrets, Cammy. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're the lore keeper, not the lore knower ahead of time. I know! Max. I know, and I'm okay with it, but I'm still frustrated. Anyways. On that frustrating note, Megan. Faye has done a lot of reaching out to her family through sending. Perhaps some of that is just to troll Matt as a DM by making, thing in <laughs> by making him intro all the voices and characters in succession. But really, what is Faye's biggest motive behind these messages? Has she struggled being out of touch with society the last few in-game weeks? Yes. Thank you. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want do you want me to elaborate? Because uh, yes. yes. Okay. It was very much the like she's a socialite. Even before she was a person that was in the public eye, she was a person in the public eye because of who her family was. So it's not necessarily the attention; it's the connection. Um, and these are like relative strangers compared to the people that she knows. And if you had access. If you had no cell phone and you finally got a cell phone and you could text for two people a day or three people a day, would you not? You know what I mean? Would yeah. you not use? Yeah, but like, w w like, who wouldn't text their mom or like, you know, leave a voicemail and say, hi, I miss you. I love you. Stuff like that. So I think it's a testament to like, I think what I'm trying to portray is the dichotomy between how to like how her presentation is very like, um, carefree and a little more like tricksy and stuff like that but it, it, it like something that grounds her mm -hmm. well and, thinking and... about that mm. oh continue no no we want to interrupt it sounds like the party is headed towards larger cities and higher society in the coming days how big is that to Faye, who has seemed out of her element in the wetlands and farm towns it's big to fay no God, no. Um, it's big to Faye, but she also knows that this isn't, and maybe this is more Megan than, than Faye, but like this isn't her story, like exclusively, and she's not going to derail the whole group just to have a whole like thing in this city because she's, because she's missed people. Like she'll enjoy what, what experiences she gets but she's not going to try to derail things, especially given the fact that she knows what's in Eclipse's letter. Like, she knows where the priority is, and her priority is following the story that she believes this group is and being mm -hmm. able to immortalize them because that's her perceived legacy. So yeah. she's chasing the legacy that is this story and that is documenting these adventures. 
her family's there and it's great to see them, but she has ways to get in touch with them. Um, but it wouldn't be uh, like, and it's more Megan's fear of being the center of attention too for, for that extended <laughs> amount of time. I don't, I'm not going to derail the whole group to be like, let's have a whole session having dinner with my family. Like, no, we're not yeah. going to do that. I mean, the same thing. I think I don't, I don't remember who mentioned it, but someone was like, yeah, we can go to your home, Brightwing. And Brightwing's like, why? <laughs> There's no reason to go there, um, but I don't know who said it. But but also out of fear, she's like, I don't, I don't know if you guys would like it. <laughs> like, you guys are so out of out of like what I'm normally used to. So, but true, that's very true. And the last question for all of you, and Matt, you can pick an NPC if you want to. What would your character's go-to karaoke song be? Oh. Oh no! Hold please. Yeah, no. I need to look through Spotify. Hold please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. that was. <laughs> Why is it? Cast. I think that was Cam. Oh God. <laughs> Everyone went to Spotify. Oh, yeah. Spotify <laughs> music. Yeah, music is very important. It is mm -hmm. true. I have Jesus Christ. What's your go-to karaoke song, Cammy? Mine? Yeah, while we're looking. Spanish or English? Either oh. one. Both. Both? God. In English, Welcome to the Internet by Bo Burnham. <laughs> <laughs> or... Butterfly Fly Away by Miley Cyrus. Butterfly Fly Away. Oh my god. And in Spanish, oh, okay. it's a song from Argentina. Oh my gosh, yes. I think you should scout mine. Uh, it's I have a... two. Okay. Oh? Yes, oh, Brian, do you have one? I think I have one. It's okay, go. Carrie Underwood's Breaking Free or whatever, Breaking Fly Away. Like, I'll spread my wings and I'll learn how to fly. That one. That's, that's yeah. not like Carrie Archibald. Underwood. What is it? That's Kelly Clarkson. Kelly Clarkson. Kelly Clarkson. My bad. Sorry. I'm breaking free from High School Musical. <laughs> no, it's no. <laughs> it's Breakaway. Oh, that one would be also great for her. Breakaway oh, by Kelly Clarkson. Oh, breakaway. Thank you. Uh, Either one. Breaking free and breakaway. Both. Okay, here's mine. Antonio's is the theme from Zorro, obviously. <laughs> he would just hum it? Like, he would just hum it? And, <laughs> yep. And Frida's, I think, is Feel Like a Woman by Shania Twain. Fuck yeah. Yes. Yeah. This is oh everything I need. I was in my top three. I'm gonna write that down. <laughs> Let's go, girls. Muffin obviously sings that part in the beginning. Yeah, yeah. I would say Dear Maria, Count Me In by All Time Low. Yes. Excellent. Yeah, yeah, I got yeah. your picture I can with you. Do that or I'll follow you into the dark by Death Cab for Cutie. Mm, yep, Ooh. yep, yep, yep. Sean, do you have one? Uh. <laughs> yes. Uh -huh, uh -huh. This is really hard. I know. Um, I feel like this was one that would have been a nice heads up in the future if there's something like this that we could think about it. I'm sorry. That's okay. Nah, on the fly. I'm I'm in a like very I'm in a very I have. I have three. Under pressure. Yeesh. Okay. I, have, I, have three. I have three. And the one that's the top one I can't say. What? But I'm gonna DM it to Matt and he'll know why. Oh, okay. <laughs> and you guys oh, can catch on. his reaction here in a moment. No, no, we're but... karaoke songs, not theme songs. No, I know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um The two that I have tied right now is uh Lonely Dance by set it off 
which is one of them. Down, write that down. Someone write that down. Leave the other down. one is ironic by Alanis Morissette. Yes, Alanis. That's a good one. <laughs> Last dance by who? Uh, my lonely dance. I oh, said okay. Off. I've been too afraid to sing Alanis because no one can do that like she can. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to DM Matt right now so you can uh, you can all catch his. his I have a guess. Let's see if I'm right. Do you want to do you want to hit enter at the same time? <laughs> sure, hold on. Okay. <laughs> it's gonna be pretty great if you get it right. <laughs> Give it a countdown. Oh. Three, three, two, three, two, okay, one. Yep, yep, yep. I don't the know. The shrieks <laughs> are even crazier in person. Uh, <laughs> oh, I love it. Amazing. Yep, same page. <laughs> okay, Cap we still said, need eclipses, right? Would Edwin even do carry? And Edwin. <laughs> yeah, Ed. Edwin would be the AV guy at the karaoke bar. This is, this is once Edwin gets to a point where he's willing to do it. Because eventually yeah, he would. would. <laughs> I, I have a feeling that his would be the roof is on fire. The roof. The roof. The roof is on fire. Faye has a great fire. persuasion. There's a difference between finding a theme and finding something your character would actually sing. Because those are two very yeah. different so it's, things. Exactly. It's, so it's, 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 yeah, what your character would listen to. Yeah. Which we've talked about. We've talked like what was your podcast. Well, the difference is your character would actually sing this. They could mm -hmm. listen to whatever the hell they wanted, but if your character was willing to actually sing something, I, so I I don't think Eclipse would really. I think she would to herself, but not in front of people. And if she was ever convinced to do anything like this, she would meme. So it'd probably just be tequila because you can't. You don't. <laughs> <laughs> tequila. No. Tequila. But, in, but instead of tequila, she walks up there it's amber sap. Yeah, exactly. So but she just stands up there like, and it's just like beep bopping around and there's oh. Tequila. And then, 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 then. <laughs> I, I feel like she wouldn't sing anything else. Cause or like, just I, stand and awkwardly on stage and just be like, tequila, while Bright Wing's over there, like with the maracas or something, you know? Yeah. <laughs> the best part about this visualization is that the moment, every single time she says tequila, it's thunderous applause. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like so explosively loud. It. Like, I feel like I feel like it would be Faye. Yeah! Faye would go up first immediately, uh. and then like probably drag Yasnit up for a duet, and then Brightwing would just sheepishly oh go up god, there after Faye. Like the duet. Brightwing. Oh my god, a duet would have to be like some some kind of Disney, which I don't think yeah. we could say. <laughs> I don't know what the law is. For... Disney duet. Disney, oh, Disney like a that. whole new world or something. Yeah, that's the first one that comes... open door. You got... I'm crazy. What? We finished each other sandwiches. Okay. Oh, that was another duet. And eight wins? Do you have one, Sean? Do host. <laughs> nice. Beer is good. Beer is good. Beer is good. And stuff. And stuff. Has Edwin ever drank anything in front of the group? I feel like he's he did. Yeah, he had a drink. He, okay, okay. He, ale. he, he ale. often ale. declines. Yeah. Can but I, have I a... think at this point, Brightwing has drank more than Edwin. <laughs> I've drank uh, twice. Let's go. I think I've more been the most. I think I've more been the drunk the most often. <laughs> Not true. Yeah, I, I think that tracks. <laughs> Yaznip <laughs> Yaz will play a middle ground because, yeah, reasons. More than Leah. More than Leah. More than Leah. Well, that concludes my question, guys. Thanks for answering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did Does anyone else have any other one off the top of their head before we sign off? Did you have one, Sean? Did I? Oh, a song. A song? Karaoke song? Song, yeah. Say your karaoke song. Yeah, no, I, I already explained. Like, this is an impossible question. This is a okay. Question. Okay. We would just, I it, it would be a tequila. I didn't. I, we would just take turns. I wasn't. I wasn't. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> that is the duet. 
No, no, it, it, it's Edwin going tequila and, and Eclipse just going na 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 Everyone's like, and on pitch. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, man. Well, they just like, just making me think like, what would our favorite TV shows be or like movie be? Nope. And that's just like, that's too much. That down the line. Oh, shit. Okay, Maybe I have one. Just dancing in the well, background. We should start. We'll start with that question next time, so we have the next entire time. thing. To okay, think okay, about okay. It. What's our favorite? The end. What's our favorite TV show? What would be? No, I'm just saying a question characters? like that. What do you binge at home? Yeah. yeah. What, what do you binge at home? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. If there was TV. Okay, I, know. I do have a question. I have a. I have a last question. Uh, you might have to pull up the map. Oh. Is there any one place, or if you had to pick one? That you as players or characters want to go to, Sildari. Sildari. The whole of Sildari. All of it. I, play, yeah. I can't. I'm I can't fascinated by it. I'm not talking about, about one place. place. Oh. Uh, oh. I haven't had the map for very long, so I really don't know uh, where to go. Home. Home would be cool. Mm. That would be so far. I think home too, but also I don't think I've really we don't know anything about any of the places, you know? Like I don't wanna pick a point yeah. on the map and say I wanna go there. I wanna go well, to a place. I'm not gonna take you there just because you say it, but I'm just curious based off of what yeah. you do know. I mean, I feel like it would be cool to experience different like climates that our characters have never experienced before. Like, I've talked before that, like, what would happen if we went to, like, the mountain snow area? Like, how would Brightwing handle it? How would ever, everyone else handle it? Like, that would Brightwing be really would cool. have to wear shoes. Edwin would be so pissed off. He'd yeah. be so angry to be there. I'm, I'm like, he's not gonna like it. In Restalios. That's one that I'm interested in. Yeah. Why? You don't know. Mm, you don't know. know. It's a cool place. I guess my house. There's so my many home. claims in. Cool. Dixie Stable, yes. <laughs> so many places you could go. Oh, the places you will go. Mm. Is Matt saying, Matt, are you saying this because you have no idea where the campaign's going after this? Or no. and you want to know where to send <laughs> this? <laughs> no. Uh, no, I don't take your desires of where you want to go into account. You're going wherever... <laughs> the situation leads oh, where will you decide i guess to lead the situation <laughs> we're gonna go all the way up oh the yes way. well yes it's your decision but there might be things happening that lean you one way or another we'll see i mean i also would want to go to like where the main political side of the place that we're going to because i because i don't know where that is i know that there was like this big ilmara there's all these well, is that ilmara Ilmara is the capital of Kathos, okay. and I've been there I don't know if you guys are planning on passing through it or not on your way south, but you can this... be close. We are, for sure. Yeah. This is we an have. interesting question, it's and it's it's a, it's vague enough to where I feel like you could answer it. Based off of all of the meal preparations and specifics of cities that you've created, oh. which city and or meal do you want us to go to so that you can describe it to us? <laughs> oh gosh, that's or which super one are you most answer. excited to show? I'm I'm clicking through to see. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have them sorted by I menu. I know he has nope, made these. <laughs> There's a goddamn recipe book in his notes. Oh, those are really oh good that's got I an Anthar recipe no, book. No, seriously, like it 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 is just a recipe book. Like there are like there's mathematical formulas. Yeah, there's pictures. Yeah, there's pictures everywhere. <laughs> I mean, it's it. It's oh, hi, Elsie. Hey, you have a question? Uh, Elena actually has some pretty cool stuff. Oh. Mm. Uh. Stay tuned for our official release of Anthara the Cookbook. I'm sorry, the cookbook. Interesting food. Which oh. one? A frail? a frail. It's to the north. It's like a little. It's, yeah. It's, I don't know. If I don't. I don't there. have the whole map. I only have the tiny map that you gave me in the beginning. Yeah. Same. Oh, hold on. <laughs> we really need to fix this issue. Like, this needs to be a not roll twenty solution. Yeah. yeah. I could give you guys all the maps since you're traveling around with someone who has it and could theoretically look at it anytime. But I could probably do that. 
That's so great. I had Whoa. the map before the players? No, we've had it. We've had it yeah. in World 20, but it's only like when it's been up. No, I know. Yeah. But I have it not in World 20. I've had this much of the map. You literally yeah, had the Adventure had Forest. I just had a forest. <laughs> that's all, yeah. This is where you're from. Good luck. There you go. I mean, that's all I, I think I, I had most of Cathos. And then it got big. I didn't realize how big the world was and how, big, like, how much of, very how big. Much of just a chunk. Cath I was like... Okay, everybody's on the map now. I don't know if you have rule 20 yet. Can I walk over there? Uh, no. Yeah. Now you can. Where is it? Inception. Cafrail is up to the north. It's a. It's like um Ooh, that fucking place. a separated piece of yeah, land, yeah, yeah. like a yeah. huge island yeah, kind that of. One. Oh, I know what you're talking about. I remember, it, but I would have to look at it. Oh, I see it. I see it oh, above yeah, yeah, Sawfeld. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you guys actually weren't that far from it, but oh, okay, it's okay. It's not one of the farming cities, so you. And now we're heading in the exact opposite direction. Correct. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> nice. We may have reason to go back up there again if we ever get on a boat. On a boat. <laughs> Do we have to? <laughs> no, we have horses now. We have a and lot a of horses now. An owl bear. An owl bear. <laughs> awesome. All right. I I, I have, have any last questions? I have one last one. Okay, go. Cammy, besides Antonio. <laughs> no. Besides <laughs> it. Okay, I'll, I'll change it. Okay. All right. Who is your second favorite NPC? Thus far. Second favorite NPC. Oh, there's been a lot. Understanding that number one is Antonio. <laughs> of course. Um, the the old lady with the owl. Mm. Oh, oh, they're great, man. Yeah. Fucking cool. Okay. I pictured, like, you know, the scenes of Never Ending Story. In the end, like crystals white. Sky blue, someone very, very old with a snowy owl with like clouded eyes, long white hair, tiny with a staff. Amazing, at least in my head. And it was, I, we, I, I, I love characters that aren't, how can I phrase this? Because every character, at least. From my perspective, we wanted to be uh, dexterous, strong, uh, hot. We wanted to be everything. And to see someone who cannot see or hear or whatever uh, have that cool aesthetic, I love that. I always wanted to play a character that doesn't speak. Uh... That would be incredible. I don't know how I would pull that off, but uh, you have a chalkboard. I know. Yeah. You can play uh, Kangu. Do your DM and other players a favor and play characters that can speak. <laughs> Seriously, I've played with a no. Kangu player before, and like we literally just made them speak like a normal character because it'd be way too fucking complicated otherwise. So. Well, uh, that's a that's a cool thing of it. I I I want to figure something out. That's my. You could give them like a lot of in Yuli's Hunger Games shit. Yeah, yeah we all saw how that game went. Didn't well, we, we were doing great. <laughs> that but... has more to say about Yuli than about Matt's character. True. But my I I specifically wrote down things that Yuli said as NPCs and the voices he said them in, and then threw only those things back at him pretty much, and he was That's just yeah. tilted the whole time. <laughs> Something about you tilting Yuli in the middle of a D and D game, or just like I don't use yeah. money. Respect. I don't use <laughs> money. So yeah, that lady and Mother Mia, Mother Mia is. So let it be known that Cammy, yeah, the like lore keeper of Anthara, does not have Brightwing's bird in her top three. No. Is my bird an NPC? I this wouldn't count so. the bird as an NPC. 
I haven't met it. I'm just saying. I met it when I was 10 years old and I never saw it again, Brian. <laughs> well, you thought you did. But it was fake. Uh, trickery. <laughs> All right. Oh, well. Anyone have anything else? It was good ending time, actually. It's almost right yeah. around session ending time. All right. Thank you, Cammy, for You're hosting so welcome. and lore keeping. This was lovely. Uh, thank you, everybody else, for showing us. Uh, thank you. Can I spin it all the way over there? Uh, yeah. Nope. Yeah. Well, they're over there. Yeah. I, I would say, Jess if for you're coming a to fan California. that watches us on YouTube, feel free to drop questions in the comments. On yes, I put yeah. that in the last video as a comment. I don't know if anyone. I I haven't gotten a notification that anyone replied. However, I will say, as a, a huzzah to say goodbye, we did huzzah. yesterday get our 40th subscriber. Yes. No uh, wow. Some random person, Let's as go. far as I know. That's oh, wonderful. Gosh. We love randos. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh we will not see you next week. We will hopefully probably see you the week after that, maybe not on Friday TBD, figuring all that out still. But until then, adios. See you later. <laughs>